and gone, and Don't Be wants the fight as well. Jumps in with present guard, keeping himself safe for now. SOFM with the re-engage. It's Nuggery on the front line as the target here. Huang Fung free firing. This Don't Be on the back line, I think it's going to be one for one here, but Huang Fung is down. Doing B with a double kill, and he wants a little bit more on top of it. SOFM chased down for the hat trick. And now Bin finds himself alone with just a pair of scissors. And I tell you, you cannot run with those. A quadra kill for Doing B, and that might just be game. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to welcome you back to the Out Play by Play. Last episode, we took a trip to the Church of Chovy and broke down the star mid laner's first ever pentakill in pro play. This time around, we're heading over to the LPL, where Doinby and the gang have been on an absolute tear with the star mid laner in world championship form. Now let's take a look into FPX's clinical performance over Suning as they flex their muscles in another masterclass victory. Now, before we get into the final moments, let's take a look at both teams' drafts. What's important to note here is the nearly identical team compositions on each side. Both teams opt for aggressive early junglers in Lee Sin and Xin Zhao. Weak side bot laners with defensive supports and late game hyper carries are the name of the game, while roaming mid laners look to navigate the map and find picks wherever they can. On the top side, it's a rematch of the 2020 World Finals between Bin, who's looking to snowball on Gwen, and Nagari, who's there to shut down and pummel any chance of a Gwen carry into the ground. As the game kicked off, it was a slow start for Chian, who found himself in an early deficit. SOFM took control of the jungle with aggressive invades to put the lease in behind. But just shortly after, it's Chion who's laughing as FPX work together to catch the Suning jungler out in the river and go on to secure the first objective of the game. What's important to note here is FPX's poise and play style in comparison to many other teams and regions. Despite their jungler falling behind early on, their ability to control objectives as a unit and build their lead bit by bit while navigating the map is unparalleled. Eight minutes in, we see exactly that. After Suning decides to go for the Rift Herald, watch four members of FPX who all begin to collapse on the objective. Despite the fact that Suning killed off good old Shelly, they're ultimately denied the eye with the FPX cavalry arriving. At the same time, Doinby, who has already got a kill to his name, finds a lingering on to delete him, and FPX walk out with a kill, and Suning get nothing for it. Just two minutes later, it's Doinby once again who finds another kill, this time with the help of Chion as they make quick work of SOFM. Crisp on the other hand, well he hasn't missed a beat despite just recently returning to the starting lineup, nearly gifting this kill onto LWX. As the game went on, FPX played their game to a T, building their lead slowly but surely and controlling every aspect of the game. 20 minutes in, with all tier 1 turrets destroyed to just the 2 destroyed by Suning, and sitting on 3 drakes, FPX are sitting pretty in the driver's seat. It also helps to have a fed super carry in Doinby, who will be a problem to say the least. It's at this stage that FPX are faced with two scenarios with Baron in play, and Soul just around the corner. Either start Baron now, and risk a smite steal or a botched team fight and lose both objectives, or stack the odds against Suning and play for Infernal Soul, which is arguably more important because even if the Drake is stolen, FPX can win the fight and get Baron off the back of it. And so, as both teams begin to set up around the Dragon Pit, it's Chion who gets caught out after trying to make a play with Doin B, but is ultimately traded with the star mid laner finding his fifth kill of the game. With Chion now dead, FPX are at a disadvantage without Smite in a fight for the Infernal Drake, and Suning look poised to deny them the Infernal Soul. But as the Drake spawns, FPX opt to press the issue anyway in a 4v4. Now take a look at Suning, who make their way towards the Dragon Pit, and immediately chunk down Crisp to just a sliver of health with the help of the Dragon Knockback, a TF card combo, Zap, and a Spear to the Gut all as he flashes away. What happens next is really just the downfall of Suning in this fight. After On lands Glacial Fissure onto both of FPX's carries, rather than focusing Doin B and LWX, SOFM dives onto the 1 HP Thresh to secure the kill instead. At this point, Suning are still with an advantage in numbers, but with a fed Doin B and altered Renekton, what happens next is all but too unfortunate for the members of Suning. 
as Doin B goes in for the engage and lands E2 onto Angel. He follows up with Chain Lash into Zonia's, stalling before Nagari dashes in for the slice and dice, while LWX pushes forward to chase Suning from the back line. Astonishingly, despite no one dying, FPX's damage output was enough to chunk down the members of Suning to a point where they were left running for the hills. And in a 3v4, without Smite, they still managed to secure the Infernal Soul. And so, with Baron still in play, FPX can now comfortably push out their lanes and begin to set up for that next crucial objective. At 27 minutes, as FPX make their way over to the Baron pit, take a look at Suning's vision. They can't see a single thing. But knowing that if they lose Baron here, it's all but a done deal, they have to contest. As FPX begin chunking down Baron, watch Nagari, who has been split pushing bot the entire time, teleport to a ward inside the pit to help his team. Angel, who was matching him, channels Destiny to join his as well. Sooning at this point are too late to the party, and FPX have safely secured the Baron. And after a game of chicken back and forth, with both teams engaging and disengaging for a fight, take a look at Chion, who puts on a display of mechanical brilliance. After Crisp lands the hook onto Braum, Chion follows up with Sonic Wave and dashes forward while on Pop's stopwatch. He then zeroes in on Huan Feng for the smoothest of insects, kicking the Suning carry right into the fray before Doin B deletes him from the fight. From there, it's all downhill for Suning, as Doin B goes on a manhunt to pick the team apart one by one. After On comes out of stasis, he makes quick work of the Suning support using a combo of E1, Kingslayer, a passive auto, and E2 to delete him from the fight. Then pressing forward and setting his sights onto SOFM, landing Chain Lash, E1 and E2 to close the distance, and Kingslayer followed by a passive auto to eviscerate the jungler. From there, he turns onto Bin with a combo of Chain Lash, Kingslayer, passive autos, and then Kingslayer again to cap it off for the quadra kill. Just like that, FPX would run it down mid, securing both the Tier 2 and Tier 3 turrets, as well as the inhibitor, before resetting for the final siege. And with Baron-empowered super minions, and Doinby, who's accounted for 9 out of 10 of his team's kills, it really was just a relaxing stroll down the mid lane, as FPX go for the back door, through the front door, to end the game. I'm Captain Flowers, and that's it for this week's episode of the Outplay by Play. Let me know what you think. Is FPX the real deal? And can Doin B keep up this performance all the way till Worlds? Will he win the MVP? Or will Knight be able to snipe it away from him? Don't forget to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter to keep up with everything League of Legends Esports. And I'll see you next time.